It was just a dream. It was just a dream. No such thing as trepiogenes. It was just a dream. All right, so that was one weird scene. Good thing we discovered at the end that it was just a dream, so we don't need to make too much sense of it. And isn't that what most of our dreams look like? But anyway, let's analyze this strange dream, because through this dream, we're going to learn everything we need to know about strepiogenes. Well, first of all, we notice the main characters in our scene, the Pi Genies, these two evil Pi Genies over here. They're called the Pi Genies, well, because they're genies, and they love this pie over here. They actually made this pie, and they created these scary little microbes to dance around the pie and sing their praises. In fact, in the video, they were chanting, Hail Pi Genies. Not sure if you were able to make that out, but Pi Genies, Piogenies, to remind us that this scene is about Piogenies. Now let's take a look at these little microbe guys over here. They're purple, as Strepiogenes is gram-positive, and that's why they stain purple in gram-staining due to their thick peptidoglycan wall. And these little microbe guys like to hang out in chains. They're linked together as Strepiogenes grows in chains, just like other strep species. And they're spherical, of course, because they're cocci, spherical shaped. Now we take a look over here at the wall, we see the betta fish. This betta fish showed up in our Staph aureus and Strep agalacte video because this betta fish reminds us of beta hemolytic as Strep hyogenes is beta hemolytic. Now in this scene specifically, Strep hyogenes is using his wife's shoe, but I'm going to call it the strap laces because it has strap and laces. This strap laces over here reminds us of streptolysin, as streptiogenes uses streptolysins, specifically ONS, which are toxins that cause hemolysis, or red blood cell destruction. And that's why it's associated with the beta hemolysis, which we just mentioned. Now, I don't care if you remember this, but at the beginning of the scene, we saw streptiogenes destroy the car. If we take a look inside the car, we see the respiratory epithelium, which reminds us that strep pyogenes affects respiratory epithelium, and that's why it causes strep throat, but we'll talk more about this in the back of the scene soon, so don't worry if you don't remember this part. More about the virulence factors, so we take a look over here. These strep pi genies over here, they get their energy from this capsule over here, this energy capsule, or this high energy capsule, which reminds us of the hyaluronic acid capsule of strep pyogenes. And he uses the M protein fuel over here to fill up the high energy capsule, which reminds us of the M protein, which helps strepiogenes attach to the host cells, which is how strepiogenes attaches to the skin or the pharyngeal mucosa. Now you may have been wondering why there are two M protein bottles over here, and that's to remind us of the molecular mimicry resulting from the M protein, leading to the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction of acute rheumatic fever, which we'll talk about soon. And we're going to see that strepiogenes acute rheumatic fever involves heart disease. After strepiogenes attaches, it destroys using hyaluronic acid, which results in local inflammation. This also enables the bacteria to spread to the bloodstream. Oh, I totally forgot to mention, the gas over here that's also used to fuel the energy capsule, this gas over here reminds us of GAS, group A strep, that strep hyogenous is also known as group A strep. Remember, strep agalacte was known as group B strep, but here we have group A strep, gas. In order to run the energy capsule, strep hyogenous in our scene needs to use the DNA ACE. It's an ACE, which has DNA on it, so it's the DNA ACE. Kind of scary. But anyway, DNAs is an extracellular enzyme that depolarizes viscous DNA and pus, and it allows strepiogenes to move more freely into the tissue. Now, it does get kind of cold in this room, which is why strepiogenes has this pyre over here, or this pile of logs with a fire there. This reminds us of the pyre positive, that strepiogenes is pyre positive. PYR positive, which is the test used to identify strepiogenes, as the Bazitracin test is not so specific for strepiogenes. That's why it's been replaced by the pyre test. But just in case you want to know, we saw in our strep agalacte video that agalacte was bazitracin resistant. Remember the resistor? So in contrast, strepiogenes is bazitracin sensitive, but again, it's been replaced by the PYR test. Then finally, we get to the back of the scene over here. 
You see, there was this boy over here. This was the son of the strep Hyogenes couple. This son over here has strep throat, unfortunately. That's probably why the parents were in such a bad mood. But in order to relieve his boredom, he watched this screen over here where his parents put different diseases caused by strep Hyogenes. Now, the reason why I didn't make a mnemonic out of this is because I think most people are aware of diseases caused by strep Hyogenes. Let's take a moment to remind ourselves by looking at the screen over here for diseases caused by strep Hyogenes. Of course, pharyngitis, strep throat but also skin infections such as cellulitis and impetigo. Strep hyogenes also causes scarlet fever. Now most people know about the strawberry tongue, but it, is, but it also causes a scarlet fever rash, as well as necrotizing fasciitis, which is, which is actually caused by the same virulence factor causing scarlet fever. And then we also have post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis, as well as rheumatic fever. And rheumatic fever, which we'll talk about in a separate video, involves the Jones criteria, with the O being for heart disease, rheumatic heart disease. But it often involves the mitral valve, which is why we've highlighted that over here. Rheumatic fever usually follows strep throat, not strep skin infections. Just a thing to keep in mind. And they've just included this lightning bolt over here, which the kid likes to have on his wall, to remind us of toxic shock-like syndrome, which is caused by pyrogenic exotoxin of strep pyogenes. Now, we're all aware of how strep throat is diagnosed. Of course, we use the rapid strep test, but since this gives lots of false positives, we require a culture from a throat swab. And treatment for strep hyogenous infection is with penicillin, which is again why I've included these pencils on the ceiling over here as a visual reminder of penicillin. For those who are allergic, other antibiotics can be used, such as ceftriaxone, macrolides, and azithromycin. But of course, we have to look at the different types of manifestations. For example, necrotizing fasciitis, which we've spoken about, may require urgent tissue debridement right away. But that's basically it for strep hyogenous. I hope you enjoyed this scene. Take care.